Okay, I'll try and go fast. So today I'm gonna to talk about PFAS. Uh, it's an emergent contaminant of concern. It's PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances. You've probably heard about it in the news as a persistent organic pollutant. Sometimes it's referred to as a forever pollutant. So you've probably heard about it on the radio or in an article or whatever. Um, it wasn't until relatively recently that um, methods and laboratory instrumentation caught up with the ability to detect these at low concentration, which could have health effects. Um, these are two of the ones that are focused on commonly, PFOS and PFOA. Here's their chemical structure. It's a bunch of carbons uh, with fluorine bonds and a hydroxyl head, and those carbon and fluorine bonds don't break down very easily. So that's why they are persistent in the environment and they are also bioaccumulative. I'm gonna focus mostly on current regulatory action. Uh, so in 2021, EPA released their strategic roadmap and they kind of laid out how they were gonna take steps to regulate these. So one of the things they did was in, uh, issue interim and, and final drinking water health guidelines, establishing levels for just advisory levels for safe levels in drinking water. And then they also, um, <clears throat> for PFOS and PFOA, did a notice of proposed rulemaking to designate those as hazardous substances under CERCLA. And that's not final yet because then in this year, in April, they did another advanced notice of proposed rulemaking um, to include other PFAS species in those as hazardous substances. So the expectation is that that will be um, finalized in early 2024. Um, and then also this year, they did proposed maximum contaminant levels uh, for drinking water regulations for six PFAS species. And so just to show you really quick, the old health advisory levels were 70 parts per trillion, and they since then most recently decreased the health advisory level for those two key species to 0 0.004 parts per trillion and 0 0.02, which is effectively zero. There's no way um, with methods to actually measure at these levels. So what they're saying is that the health advisory level is basically zero. Um, the replacement chemicals for PFOS and PFOA are called Gen X chemicals on PFBS, and those levels are a little bit higher um, for their, and these are the final health advisory levels for those. Uh, so a little bit higher there, but that health advisory level is not enforceable. So that's why they're kind of laying the steps to move forward with the MCL, which is expected to be finalized at the end of this year, but it's actually probably more like 2024. And that, that rule wouldn't actually go into effect until three years later. Um, a little bit more about the MCLs and MCL goals. The MCL goal is actually the, the level at which you would see no expected health effects. So there, the MCL goal for, um, for PFO and PFOS is actually zero. The MCL itself is four parts per trillion because that's what can be reliably measured and removed with the technology at water treatment plants and stuff like that. And then for these other species, PFNA, PFHXS, PFBS, and the Gen X chemicals, they use a hazard index calculation, which means they combine them all like because um, they're concerned about additive toxicity or synergistic toxicity. So it would be like your measured level as a as the numerator over 2,000 or over 10, and then you add all those together, and then if it exceeds one, that would be a violation of the MCL for that. That's how the hazard quotient works. The IDEM has, you know, several PFAS species listed in their, their published levels. Um, these are those six key species that we talked about, and these are groundwater levels. So those are the levels for those. And then also this year, they released an interim announcement saying that they would uh, add these nine species to their 2024 update. So they're not in the, the R2 published level table yet, but it will be next year. IDEM's not doing any, other states are doing more, but IDEM's not doing anything else that the EPA's not doing. That's not happening at the federal level. Some other things that are gonna happen at the federal level is that they're looking to regulate under RICRA, and they're gonna have PFAS to be included in the toxic release inventory, and then also with the TASCA. So it's gonna be all over the place. So that's, that's it for me.